Hey friends, Pastor Mike here again. Today we're going to look at just one verse of John chapter 17. Verse 17 where Jesus prayed, sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. It amazes me how often the Lord Jesus confirmed the truth and the authority and the power of God's word. Now there are many today who claim that the Bible is just another religious book that merely contains truth, or they believe that it becomes truth to them. But you know, the Lord Jesus said that the word of God is truth. Every bit of it is true. Now, if any part of it is untrue, then my friends, we just can't believe any of it. If there's any falsehood in the Bible, then we don't really know what we can trust, particularly about Jesus and our salvation. Marcus Rainsford makes a strong point when he writes, if there is one thing more remarkable than another in the recorded life of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is his constant endorsement of Scripture and his evident faith in and constant use of Scripture. Loved ones, if anyone was ever qualified to speak on his own apart from Scripture, it was Jesus, the one who himself claimed to be the embodiment of truth. But he never did. Over and over, he either quoted or referred to the Old Testament. At least one-tenth of the words Jesus spoke in the Gospels were taken from the Old Testament. Of the four Gospel accounts, we find 180 of the roughly 1,800 1, verses spoken by the Lord Jesus, and they were either Old Testament quotes or he alluded to the Old Testament. Now, we talked last time about God's Word and its ability to sanctify us. The Greek word is hagiatso, and it means that God's truth can set us apart for God and from sin and the world. It also means to make holy, to make pure, to cleanse us from sin. When anything in the Bible is sanctified, it is cleansed and set apart for God's divine purposes. God's word is able to sanctify us because of its character. It is truth, and anytime you apply God's truth, it will influence your life for God. Obeying it will set us apart because it has transforming power and it will prepare us to serve God. Our sanctification can be understood in three aspects. First of all, our sanctification was complete the moment we trusted the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Now, this is referred to as positional sanctification. We heard the gospel and the moment we believed it and received Christ, God sanctified us and we were born again. We were cleansed of our sins once and for all. And 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23 says, You have been born again, not of seed which is, imperish which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and enduring word of God. Not only have we been set apart by God's truth, but we've also been sanctified by the indwelling Holy Spirit. And we now have this ability to understand the spiritual truths of God's word. I like the way the NIV renders 1 Corinthians 2.14. It says that the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. Now, we've been sanctified by the Word of God and the Spirit of God, and the Bible calls us saints. The word here is hagios. Sounds similar, and it also means sanctified or set apart ones. Friends, we do not have to be canonized to be saints. If we're born again, the Bible calls us saints. For example, Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, really a church that we could consider not very saintly, Listen to how he referred to these believers. He said, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, saints by calling, with all who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. He wrote again in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13 that God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. Of course, the only reason we're able to be saved and sanctified is because Jesus was sanctified for our sakes. If he hadn't sanctified himself, then there's no way any of us could be sanctified. In his prayer, he says in verse 19, For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they themselves also may be sanctified. He sanctified himself, setting himself apart from the rest of humanity by living a pure and holy life. The only man to ever live without ever sinning. 
perfectly fulfilling God's will in everything he said and did so that he could qualify to suffer and pay the punishment for all of our sins. This was his father's will. So he allowed himself to be brutalized and crucified so that he, as a man without sin, could pay for the sins of the world. Hebrews 7.27 says that Jesus once for all offered himself for sin. And God confirmed that his sacrifice was acceptable to him by raising him from the dead. Paul says Jesus in Romans chapter 1 and verse 4 was declared the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead according to the spirit of holiness. Positional sanctific sanctification took place in our past, and we are now in Christ, and that distinguish, distinguishes us from the rest of humanity. We are set apart from an unbelieving world. So in this way, we were <clears throat> part of the answer to Jesus' request. But now there's more to it than that. Once we've been set apart positionally, we need to grow in holiness and righteousness. And the means to the spiritual growth is by both the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Jesus was also speaking of a practical or progressive sanctification, which means that we are sanctified by the Word as we believe it and we obey it. Positionally, we're up here. Progressively, we should be rising to be more like Jesus, growing in our faith. We should be coming more like him in character each day until he calls us home. God is sanctifying us right now in answer to Jesus' prayer. That's why Paul would say, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, Philippians 3.14. You can't get there without the word of God. You can't be sanctified apart from the word of God. Truth applied to your life by the power of the Holy Spirit is how God will bring you to spiritual maturity. We were set apart for God's special purposes. We possess positional sanctification, but it needs to be demonstrated in a practical way. Let me suggest that the outworking of our sanctification can actually be categorized in two separate ways. First of all, when God continues to set us apart, he determined that all of us would demonstrate it in the same way. In other words, we are all being set apart for the same kinds of things. For example, all of us have been set apart to be witnesses for Christ, to live holy and righteous lives. That is a general responsibility to, that applies to everyone who knows Christ. We are all being sanctified so that we can be fruitful witnesses for him. But now we must also sanctify ourselves. Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15, but sanctify your Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to, uh, for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. He has and he is sanctifying us for himself, but we have to sanctify him in our lives. That is, he is to be set apart as Lord. He is the God that we serve and worship. He's our master. He's the ultimate authority. He is the most important person in our lives. So that when the opportunities to share the gospel come, we'll be ready. I'm afraid many of those who have been set apart for Christ are not really sanctifying Christ apart as Lord in their heart. Because too many of us don't really witness the way we ought to. Friend, I hope you're not one of them. We are all set apart so that we would be filled and led by his spirit. And the word of God works in tandem with the spirit of God so that we will live for him. He didn't just come to save us. He came to change our lives. The Spirit sets us apart. He marks us out as belonging to God and then ministers to us and through us by the Word of God, leading us to know and understand God's Word, equipping us to do God's will and to become more like the Lord Jesus. All of us are also to lead morally pure lives. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. There are no exceptions, friends. In other words, no Christian can ever say that this verse is not for them. Now, there are many other general applications that come out of our sanctification that are similar. All of us have been positionally and are being progressively sanctified for things like demonstrating God's love 
to demonstrate humility and holiness, to pray, to get into God's word and learn and grow, and so much more, even to suffer. God has set every one of us apart for these things and so much more, friends. Our sanctification is also being applied in a personal way. In other words, God has set each one of us apart for reasons that apply to no one else but us. Jesus prayed for his disciples that they could be uniquely used to spread the gospel throughout the world, to bring the word of God to the world. And each one went to a specific place where God led them to serve. He said in verses 18 and 19, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. And I say again, when Jesus said he sanctified himself, he was simply saying that he set himself apart to do God's will, to do something that only he could do. None of us could have done what Jesus had done. Now, there's another example that we can find in the Old Testament in the book of Esther. We discover that she was sanctified and she was being sanctified by being placed in a position to save the people of Israel. She was especially set apart and made the queen of a pagan nation so that she might be the means of saving the lives of the Jewish people. They were captive in Persia, but the message her uncle Mordecai sent to her is found in Esther chapter 4 and verse 14, where he said, For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. God sovereignly raised this woman up to be the queen of Persia for the sake of his people. Again, the Lord told Ananias about the apostle Paul in Acts chapter 9. He said, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So Paul was set aside, he was sanctified to do a unique ministry to the Gentiles, but also to the Jews. And, uh, and he is the special uh, apostle to the church, if you will. Now, each one of us has a specific purpose or reason for which we have been sanctified. For example, let's talk about those in ministry. Missionaries have been raised and set apart like Behind me on the wall, we have letters from some of the missionaries that we support. Chris Mawa, Ma, Mawa <laughs> from Kenya. Sorry, Chris, if you're listening. A Martinez family in Argentina. Sergey and Tanya in Bulgaria. I've got Eddie and Sylvia in Costa Rica. These people have been uniquely set apart by God to specific places of ministry. We are all called to serve the Lord in general. But he sets us apart uniquely so that we can be a witness, we can be an encourager, we can be a leader, a helper in some capacity so that we can serve others. As a pastor, God has set me apart for his purposes to reach people in a way that others couldn't. He continues to sanctify me as the pastor of Lakeland Bible Church. He's sanctified people like my wife and Mary and Judell and Melissa and Walt to teach in our church. He raised up a man named Jim and set him apart so that he could head up our playground upgrade. Those of you who are parents, you've been sanctified, continuing to be sanctified, so that you can teach your children the things of God and, and set an example for them of what it means to be a godly Christian. Each one of us has a special place, unique to you alone, in which God wants to use you, in your families, in your neighborhood, in the workplace, and in his church. Something that only you can do with the gifts and abilities that he's bestowed upon you. Now, of course, his ultimate purpose for which Jesus saved us is simply that we might glorify God and to live in such a way that will bring him glory and honor. Now, when this life is over, our sanctification will be complete. And that, my friends, is called perfect sanctification, where we shall receive forever our glorified bodies and we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, according to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1 and verse 2. So you could say that there are three tenses of sanctification. We have been sanctified. That's in the past. That's positional. We are being sanctified. That's right now. That's progressive. And 
then one day in the future, we will be sanctified. That is perfect sanctification. Or we could say it another way. Positional sanctification is God's work of justification. Progressive sanctification is God's work of sanctification, per progressively transforming us into the likeness of his son. Then perfect sanctification is our glorification, when one day we will be like him and have our glorified bodies forever. Every way you look at it, friend, God is answering the prayers of our Lord Jesus. And I thank God for that. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for answering your son's prayer. Continue to sanctify us so that we may become more and more like him. Lord, may we cherish your word as the absolute truth. It is our ultimate authority in life to believe it and to obey it so that your Holy Spirit can transform us. Thank you that one day we will be completely sanctified, perfected forever for your glory. Do for us, Lord, what only you can do. And then use us for those things that you've determined that only we can do. And we'll praise you and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, friend, I trust that the word is a blessing to you. Go out and serve the Lord Jesus. He set you apart for his purposes. Amen. So God bless you. God willing, we'll see you again next time. Bye.